Why do rich people care about making money? The poor certainly need to care about doing so. When one's resources are only enough to scrape by, money is all that matters. It is important for the middle class as well. Looking after their spouses, their children, there is a culture of dependence that weighs them down. The rich want to make money because they can always become richer. There is always another echelon of wealth to rise above, some degree of opulence that is beyond their grasp. They drive to even further heights, seeking to slake their thirst for coin. They care about making money simply because they can. To do so, the rich exploit people far below them on the social ladder, the poorest of the poor. To the oil magnate, to the harsh dictator, to the kings and queens and lords and ladies, the common people are specks of dirt. To Marshall, Carter, and Dark, the rich are unto ants. People, regardless of social standing, are all the same. The poor may spend their savings on worthless yet treasure trinkets sold by the middle class. The salary man may splurge on a pretty ring for his wife, the profits of which go into the pockets of a wealthy mining boss. In the same way, the gullible rich will burn millions of dollars on a single impossible object. Everyone is willing to waste their precious, precious money on something out of the ordinary. But value is artificial. The poor spend their pennies on mass-produced china, convinced that it has some worth to it. The rich convince the metal class that diamonds are rare and valuable, despite the stones being retrieved in Africa by the billion. Marshall, Carter, and Dark convince the rich that the impossible is invaluable, while any anarchist on a street can twist a die into a hypercube. The methodology of such a scheme is quite simple, but the critical step is the gain of market monopoly. If you are the only seller in town, you can set the price at any level you desire, so long as you can drum up demand. In this regard, Marshall, Carter, and Dark have the advantage. For hundreds of years, they were the only peddlers of anomalous wares in the world. They had the time to gain the capital, and with that capital they can now outprice even the most competitive upstart. While organizations such as the Foundation, the GOC, and the Horizon Initiative resent the company's existence, they are unable to deal with such an unassailable economic powerhouse. With a glance, Marshall, Carter, and Dark could level a city, bankrupt a country, with a single call, they could plunge the planet into a thermal nuclear war. Yet to the eternal relief of all, they are the least volatile players in the anomalous field. After all, if the veil of secrecy were to break, their trinkets would become worthless, their business would crumble and dissolve. While this may cause some to think of Marshall, Carter, and Dark as a massive, faceless corporation, their workforce numbers at most in the order of 100 personnel. Their operations are directed and streamlined, maximizing efficiency and minimizing cost. Further manpower if necessary is outsourced from other organizations. Those in the highest positions of power are perhaps the most mysterious. Wild stories abound on the subject, depending on the source, they may be ghosts or demons, old men sending messages from beyond the grave, faceless monsters from another world, or even shape-shifting lizardmen. A major part of their operation is establishing supply lines between various anomalous groups. Marshall, Carter, and Dark purchase directly from groups such as Dr. One Entertainment and The Factory, reselling their goods at exorbitant markups. Prometheus Labs gladly support the group with their latest research, in exchange for samples of exotic and complex anomalies. They often host anarch exhibitions, exerting notable control of the artistic marketplace. Similarly, they host various social functions from the most rich and powerful people in the world. With hooks throughout Europe, America, Russia, and China, there is never trouble finding a market for a given item. They are, of course, willing to sell to any buyer. Groups such as the Chaos Insurgency are some of the most valuable clients. Perhaps the organizations most opposed to Marshall, Carter, and Dark are the Mana Charitable Foundation of the Serpent's Hand. Mana Charitable often attempts to sabotage their operations due to their restrictions of anomalous goods to the upper class. However, their limited range and resources make them more irritating than threatening. The Serpent's Hand, meanwhile, are directly and openly antagonistic, caring neither for the veil of secrecy or the company's continuing practice of anomalous human trafficking, and impossible to economically intimidate, they represent the only pervasive threat to the group's operations. Without question, Marshall, Carter, and Dark are one of the most important pieces on the chessboard of the anomalous world, occasionally putting other players in the check, but never in the mate. For Marshall, Carter, and Dark, the planet is an intricate network they have secured safely beneath their thumb, where winning and losing are meaningless terms. There is no need to move pieces when you can move the board. When you can end the match at any time, there's only one reason to continue. It's all about playing the game.